Good evening, Mythfits and Mythettes. It's time for the second half of Season 6 with the Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek and pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest, but not this week, uh, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I think it'll be a lot of work talk tonight, Mike. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this episode is my co-host, Mike Kathis. Howdy do. We're talking inside baseball uh, right there. Dude, I can't wear my badge, not legally. All right. <laughs> I looked in the camera and I'm like, shit, what is this thing doing? Yeah, <laughs> All right, so on this episode, if you can't tell by the title of what we've already just kind of hinted to, we are going to be talking about our work. Um, that means that we couldn't find a guest for the uh, for tonight. Actually, we got a we got a bunch of invites out. It's just no one signed up, and Mike were like Mike and I were like, "What are we gonna talk about?" And we're like, "Hey, we we do some cool stuff." You know, people ask about our jobs. I'd like to think I pulled that rabbit out of my head. It's pretty handily. It's pretty hard to impress you or get you uh, motivated on a on a just us show. So yeah, yeah. So I was like, "All right, yeah, sure, let's do it, let's do it." All right, so here we are. We're gonna. We're going to regale you with what we think is very boring, but you might think is very interesting. Let's hope, right? right? <laughs> well, so. You think what I do is pretty interesting. You like to make fun of it all the time. I and do. I think what you do is phenomenally interesting, even though most of it you would have to kill us So if yeah. you told us. Right. But you know, you're going to tell us the, 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 the outer fringes of what you do. Yeah, yeah, least. yeah. I could talk in – non-specific like this is a job that i worked on there's some things i can talk about um and and that sounds way more way more pretentious than it really is like it sounds it's like oh wow what kind of neat stuff it's like uh, really you'd be bored trust me most most of the stuff i do is not that and you know, whatever <laughs> so all right so peter what if if you had to say to someone oh no Hi, I'm Mike. Uh, I I I'm a sign language interpreter for a living. Oh, well, what do you do for a living? Yeah, I see. What my so, yeah. So I wasn't I even thinking about what's one, ten, you know, five words or less. What do you do? <laughs> what is your job title according to my, the, my job title according to the U.S. Army is industrial specialist. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, that's non-specific. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, but basically, mostly what I do is project management. So project management and engineering. So, you know, we get jobs come in from the Army to build a thing, and we build a thing. Uh, okay. And then I run that job building thing. Well, good. Because, all right, so here's what's going on, guys. Basically, um, Pete and I are going to interview each other about our jobs. I'm going to interview him, and you all will be able to interview both of us. So please ask all kinds of questions, uh, should you like. Um, and uh, for for both of us, and uh, let's well uh, we get started. Who wants to go first? Do you want to interview? Get started interviewing me. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Sure. All right. So let's Mike's bio. Mike Kafis is a sign language interpreter for over twenty years. He has worked at the University of Maryland Drug Treatment Center facility, communicating communication between clients, staff, and students. He has over ten years' experience covering many Baltimore area hospitals as an emergency room on-call interpreter. He has presented several workshops to fellow interpreters, conducted in-service training on deaf culture, and mentored interpreting and university deaf studies college students. So it's not just that he does sign language interpreting. Um, he knows Mike knows a lot about the deaf community. So if you have any questions about, because um, that is a very ingrained, that's a very tight community, right? Mike, you've told me many times is that it is it's it is a community. Yes, uh, you'd be surprised. People, uh, you know how like say Baltimore's a small town. A lot of people yeah. know small like, Oh, are you of this family name? Blah blah blah. Uh, it's very much like that, except on a countrywide scale um, across the U.S. Okay. So. You know, you, I could say, oh, yes, uh, you know, as an interpreter, I have to be careful because I, if I said, like, oh, I interpreted for uh, Peter Bryant, someone in California would know and hear that and then would start calling all their friends and their friends and it would get back to me in, like, five minutes that, you know, and you'd be like, why did you just tell someone you interpreted for me? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. So, potentiality is, is an important thing, but uh, we can definitely get into that. Yeah, all right, all right. Hey, and if you guys are seeing this weird, like, horizontal line transfer thing when it jumps back and forth, that's something new. We, I don't know why Hangouts is doing that, but they it did it last last week, and it's doing it this week, so. It, 
it, it's a, a what is that called a feature or a bug depending right. upon uh, if you like that old school switch yeah. back and forth it's it's my old school uh premiere filter that i have put yeah. on <laughs> there you go you're, 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 wow you're uh, doing live feed right through premiere nice yeah sure nice job right so anyway yeah so so mike um Okay, oh, we got a question right out the what at the the uh, the gate here. It says uh, Spence wants to know what would your dream job uh, to interpret for, like concerts, debates, events. What like if you could interpret for something, what would be like like your oh. Um, so I've I always wanted to get into courtroom interpreting because legal has always um, fascinated me. That said, I have spent most of my 20 years interpreting in the mental health field. So, uh, and I got to say, it's not bad. Uh, I've, it's something, you know, it's, it's good. You, there's uh, extra, you know, there can be some extra if you're a freelance interpreter and we can get into the difference between that. But um, there's a lot of extra money in, in that. Um, there can be. Uh, real quick, the difference is I have been a staff interpreter and it's very rare to be a staff interpreter at one place for that long. Um, and I'm not going to get into some of the weeds about some of the very recent changes in my job and stuff. Some people know, some people don't. It doesn't matter. I mean, this is just the general job of interpreting and what I do. But um, we uh, – so I work at the same place every day. And uh, But when I did the emergency room interpreting, that was me on call. I would get a call that, you know, and at any time. And I got paid ten dollars an hour just to have the they call it the pager, but it was all their cell phones at that point. But I get ten dollars an hour just to sit on call and wait for the phone to ring. Sometimes it rang, sometimes it didn't, but it was very good money when it did ring. So yeah. um, that was in, in sign language interpreters. If anyone's curious, like, well, what does a sign language interpreter make? Like out of the gate, and I'm talking about in the two thousand latter two thousands, and um, you know, even now, in sign language. In, sign language interpreters can start out making as a freelance interpreter uncertified probably about 25 to 30 dollars an hour and if you're certified you can make upwards of 40 to 50 dollars an hour that's why you're Uh, rolling in the money huh no no No. (laughs) see i chose to stay as a staff interpreter so and i get benefits and i don't make a whole lot of money i'm not in that you know that that that, uh double comma club (laughs) right Uh, because I, I, I stay at university. I stayed at University of Maryland for so many years for my benefits for the kids and stuff. So, uh, you know, it's a choice you make. Uh, and you know, obviously, I wouldn't go back and change it. But um, uh, yeah, what's up? Uh, oh no, that was it. That was the question. Um, okay. <laughs> no, no, Jonathan's joking. Right, says Nelson Mandela's funeral. Uh, <laughs> I would think you'd want to interpret something like a Comic Con or something. You know, like a. Uh, Something awesome like that. Like, imagine going to like San Francisco Comic Con and like like interpreting for like the uh, the panel of, of Star Trek or something. That would be neat. But those really big events, there's a lot of people, um, and and some of those are broadcast, so uh, some of that gets recorded. So it's one thing, you know, when you're an interpreter. And listen, interpreters is just like any other job. You know, we are. We are destined to make mistakes in language. Language itself. All right. You, uh, let's just bring you and I, or, you know, I'm going to say you and I. I'm not going to okay. bring you or your wife into it. Okay. Like, like you hey, know, don't do that. we have communication issues. Yeah, right. People in general have communication issues often, often, right? So imagine two different languages in the same thing. And one person is responsible for that. And I have to be responsible to know when I know that that person, person A is saying something that person B doesn't understand and it wasn't my fault but you know there's there's like I said you and I say shit to each other all the time and it's mis misunderstood well my job is not to make sure people understand everything that the other one is saying okay right. my job is to take what you said in the the you know the 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 uh i guess the heart of the meaning okay right. and 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 the and, and put it to, to this other language. And if what that person said they didn't understand or they didn't mean to say it that way, that's not my problem. Right. Um, you know, and, and <laughs> honestly, that happens to me all the time when I interpret staff meetings at work. Right. You know, I get a room full of hearing people and all I do is I'm like back and forth. I, it's like, it's like 
the the jogging you know it's like i'm just i feel like i've been running for an hour i'm just like oh my god can we just all have a moment of silence and this person's talking to this person and and they're treatment professionals so what do they do they always repeat what the other person says so am i understanding this correctly you mean blah 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 no no that's not what i meant i don't mean blah 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 i mean blah 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 it's so so fucking meta so it's like there's this conversation going on and then there's the conversation so there's all right so a is talking to B, right? So there's the conversation yes. of A talking to Mike, the conversation of Mike talking to B, the conversation of B talking back to Mike, and the conversation of Mike talking back to A, right? There is, holy shit, that is yeah. something. And, and 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 it's don't forget, it's sometimes it's just a matter of the deaf person is sitting there, uh, for lack of a better word, listening to. And yes, Jonathan, yeah. I'll get to that in just one second. I will. Um, uh, they're just listening to the conversation. Yes, I said lack of a better word. Okay, yeah. um, observing the conversation, and I'm just, I'm just basically repeating back what a bunch of hearing people are saying. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, ah, can we just? Everyone just needs to shut up for a second. Uh, okay. So Mike, you could do that comedy routine. I've been interpreting all day, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Yes, I have said that. I, matter of fact, I did. I texted Jenny today after that meeting. I was like, my arms are killing me. <laughs> All right. So Jonathan has asked me to sign uh, Welcome to the Mythwits. All right. So first of all, this is an interesting thing. In deaf culture, uh, people and very common pronouns have what is called a sign name. Okay. Yeah. So right now, Pete and I, we're going to make up a sign name for the Mythwits. And Pete, I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Uh, recommend exactly. Yes. Thank you. All right, yes. yeah, we're on the same. Wait, okay. no, no, it's it's yeah, I guess right. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So this is Mythwits, and Pete and I have always sort of done this in pictures and stuff. If you've if you're a long time listeners and viewers, uh, and if you're not viewing right now, where yes, yeah, so let me describe this. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I have one. My right hand is I'm holding like my uh, middle ring, finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky up. Uh, and then the the same thing with my other. I'm basically holding my thumb and my forefinger together. It's like right? an okay have, sign, sort of. Yeah, like a number three or like three fingers are up in the air. One of them goes upside down. Though. My left hand goes upside down, so there's an M and a W, right? So that's Myth Wits. Okay, so that's Myth Wits name sign now, okay? Okay. So really, you want to just say, welcome to the Myth Wits. Like, this is the sign for welcome, and I have to make sure I'm in the in the thing for this, but that's welcome. <laughs> So, all right, hold on. Let, let me stick this on you. Here we go. All right, go ahead. So, welcome to the Mythwits. Okay. okay. Welcome here to the Mythwits. All right. You don't have to say, welcome to the Mythwits. You don't have to do that. Okay. Okay. So, anyway. So, so uh, somebody who, who just graduated from interpreting school might do the to the, like a newbie. That would be like a newbie thing. Yeah, I mean, you're taught in school not to do that. That would right. be like, okay. you know, you failed out sort of thing. <laughs> it's like high school sign language. Yeah. There's different types of sign language, okay? There's American Sign Language, ASL, okay, with its own grammar and syntax, um, which is more akin to, um, like, uh, Spanish in word order and things like that. So, like, you know, instead of saying, like, a, I'm going to the store, it's store I go, okay? Um, uh, but there's also people who do prefer English signing, okay? So it's like a pigeoned type of thing. So there are some people who do want you to sign, I am going to the store. I That's like Forrest Gump. I am going to the <laughs> store. <laughs> and, you know, some people, they want that. They want you to have the INGs and the thes and the its and blah, blah. All right. Blah, 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 blah. So Spence wants to know how you got in. How did you get interested into that? So it's an it, it's a, a semi interesting story, but it's not like amazing. But I was basically um, in taking ASL one. OK, um, because I needed a language to complete my AA degree before I moved on to Towson University. Uh, I took it in the summer. Oh, no, I took it one, it was my last semester before, and I fell in love with it. I was just like, oh, my God, I love this. And ASL to me, it was like 
it, the class and the teacher, it was like being in kindergarten. You know what I mean? Like we would all go on little walks and she would go point and she would say, oh, see that? That's a camera. You see this? This is a screen. It's a screen. And, oh, look at that. It's a computer. And, and you know, all this different stuff. And we'd all be walking around like, ooh, oh, screen. <laughs> ooh. You know. And and I loved it. Hey, and then I, Mike, Tatonka, right? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're funny. And so, uh, I said, "Oh man, I'm taking another. I'm taking ASL. I know this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life now." And I took a I took an ASL two class over the summer. I was like, I was so good at it. And um, it was like going uh, from kindergarten to college, and I had no idea. So. The teacher that I had has that kindergarten mentality, and that's how she liked to, you know, teach, you know, beginning students, which <laughs> that was my speed, okay? Kindergarten, my speed. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy, his name was Keith, and he would come in, and he just basically signed, like, you know, as if uh, – you didn't know, uh, you know that feeling you get when someone just walks up to you and starts speaking Spanish, and you're like, oh, I, 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 that was, he was walking through, and he was just like, oh, yeah, so blah, 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 da, 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 da. and we're like, oh, I, 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 I don't, I can't do this. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you but I stuck with me? It. I stuck with it because I really did kind of just fall in love with it, um, and it, it's hard. You know, if anyone asks, if anyone wants to know, is learning sign language easy? No. It, it's, I mean, you want to learn a sign or two? Yeah, it's easy. You want to have fun? Take a class? That's fun. If you want to learn the language in order to be a communicator, it's hard. Uh, it's like learning um, more of a – when you're learning the language because it's iconic, it's like learning Mandarin or something like that. Right. And, and would you say um, – oh crap, would you say – so this is sort of like one of the arguments I have when, when people – when I hear the, the, the discussion from people who will say, well, I had to take all these dumb classes in college. You know, I just wanted to learn what I went there to learn and I, why do I have to learn all this other stuff? And like this is why because when mm -hmm. you go to college, you have an idea for a major. And yeah, a lot of people stick with that major and that's what they do. But a lot of people don't. Like what was your major before you decided to do that? <laughs> well, when I first got out of poly, yep. I wanted to be an architect. Oh, Five-year plan. And, yeah, and then I started taking some uh, engineering classes. Or yeah. not really engineering. It was like, oh, you have to take this computer class. So, you know, yeah. like like Fortran and like uh, some other computer, just like computer languages. And I'm just like, uh, and, and math classes. I'm like, uh, I think I want to work with people. Right. <laughs> Statics. <laughs> Statics is enough to punch you right in the taint. <laughs> so I, I started um, taking – like uh, sociology and, and um, psychology classes. And I was like, ah, I'll be a social worker. You know, oh. I, I do. Oh. I work. Now, if I could go back and, and change, like, yeah, I wouldn't be an interpreter. I would have gone to social work. No, no, I wouldn't. Mm. You know, I'm close enough. I'm close enough. Like, I hey, value hey. in the mental health profession as a paraprofessional and seeing all the stuff, how all the sausage is made and all hey, that. And, and I, I appreciate I'm not I'm not bagging on social workers, just so you know. It's just not a yeah. job that, that takes a special person to be a social worker. Oh, yeah. You're that anti-person. Yeah, I'm that not, I'm not, I would be horrible at that job. I would be the worst social worker ever. Hey, son, how about you reach down. See them, them straps on the side of your boots? Yank on them. <laughs> Except that person didn't have boot straps on their boots. That's the problem, Pete. Right. That's your problem, son. Get some boots with some straps so you can yank on them. <laughs> like here you go. Here gives him a box. There's there's a pair of boots for you. Included bootstraps included. <laughs> right. Check is in the, your bills in the mail. All right. So um, I, I so I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, so let's say you're interpreting and you get all because you work in the mental health. You work with the deaf addictions a lot, right? I mean that's mainly what you do. So I'm assuming that you get a lot of people who aren't. Mm, completely, you know, mm, uh, mentally, Affluent. what's that? Affluent. Yes. Okay. But I was, I was going to say not, you know, they don't have all the social graces that, you know, somebody might have. And let's say they go see a doctor. Have you ever had to deal with, um, with a, a, a deaf person signing a whole bunch of like, either like racist or like, 
like insulting, like really shitty stuff. And like, if they did, did what did you do? Like, like I don't know, you know, like like I don't. What if you get what if you get, what if you get like a deaf person who is who's like I don't know, he's, he's like an old racist dude, and he's just like you know, he goes to see his doctor, and you know, tell this n word to you know f off. Like, what do you do? Would you do you sign that? Do you not sign that? What do you do? You mean what did I do? Because okay, right, right, right. I assume that has happened. Like, what do you do in that situation? So, all right. Um, there, there's a couple of different things. So I, I, one of my emergency on-call interpreting um, experiences brought me to a hospital where the woman literally, as soon as I got there and she got, you know, and I was like, hi, I'm Mike, I'm the interpreter, da, da, da. And then before the doctor even came in, she literally said, oh, I hope I don't have one of those. And she literally was like those end doctors. Oh, my God. And and I honestly, and, you know, this is still at a time when I was still trying to be critical thinking. You know, I was learning about critical thinking and everything. So I just tried to use that to, like, maybe I could plant a seed of, like, so, you know, I was, like, kind of having a conversation with her. I was like, so let me ask you something. Um, uh, and, and I don't know who the doctor is right now, so I'm, I'm sorry I can't. And you, I, I asked her, let me ask you something. If there were two doctors standing over there, right, and one of them, was white and he like got D C's and D's and barely passed medical school. But that other say that let, like that black doctor over there, if he got all A's and he's saved like tens of hundreds of lives, would you still want that white one? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm, you know, just I'm, just, you know I'm, I'm exploring your ignorance. Can we explore yeah. your ignorance? <laughs> right. And he was like, well, I, I don't know. You know, it's like, I literally punched her in, in, in the, uh, rationale, you right. know, yeah. Um, sort of that. She still was um, being real, like snooty, and I think she was sort of testing me a little bit. So I said, "Do you want, you know, uh, one of the things, one of the techniques to to specifically answer your question?" As I said, "Do you want me to seriously interpret what you're saying, you know, or are you just, you know, whatever?" Like I, I'll, you know, get in someone's face about it. And the second thing is, I will if, and I've had this happen before, where I was interpreting a um uh psychological evaluation and the person started going off on you know um how racist they were and uh and sexist and da -da -da -da, and like talking about how the doctor this and that so i will start at, to make sure that the doctor and the professional is clear so as not to create any more um confusion i will start speaking in a third person instead of the first person of that person. Cause usually I'm just like, hi, I don't like you, you bad person. You, you know, right. I would just, move. so yes, they're now saying, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of racial slurs saying words like this and that and this and such. And, um, and aside from that, uh, they're, they're saying that they don't want you to be their doctor because of your race and things like that. You know what I mean? Like I would yeah, go yeah, into that, right. thing, which I have. Um, and, and I'll allow the doctor. Cause that's the, that's the one thing I don't have to own it. Right. You know, it's You're like, like, I'm Paul. That's between y'all, man. I'm just, yeah. I'm a uh, machine like, here. Balls in your court. How would yeah. you like to handle that? Yeah. You know, and, and times professionally, uh, I've had, you know, people come to me and be like, you know, thank you for how you handle it. I really appreciate it. I liked how you jumped out of that because I didn't want to get confused and all this and that. Um, the neatest thing is having a person just in general. I've mm -hmm. had a, a doctor at, um, Hopkins one time, not related to anything racist <laughs> interpreting. It was just very, he just said, I, I cannot thank you uh, for this experience. I, he said, you know, you were the most professional interpreter I've worked with. I've worked with a few interpreters and they were very unprofessional. Thank you for keeping this. And, and, and I'd, I'd hate to say that, you know, that could be the case, but sometimes that is the case, you know? Yeah. Cause it, there is a, it, I mean, it's, it's screwed up as it is. You also have a responsibility to the person you're interpreting to say you know to to convey their intent even if it's screwed up right so by putting yourself in the third person like i'm not saying this this person is saying this i have to let you know what they're saying it's my job it's my ethical duty right it's, yeah. it's fucked up but it's what i gotta do and and there have there are unprofessional interpreters who would say something like you know jump out and completely take over the conversation and say hold on a second here First of all, you are not being appropriate. Blah blah right. blah, 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 blah. And it's just like I, I cringe to think that that has happened, but I have heard that I've heard stories. Sure. So, sure. all right. Well, hey, uh, Mike is almost out of time. Is there anything else? Oh, wait, 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 wait. oh, Tori's got a question. 
How do you feel about the interpreters who aren't really interpreters and just go out there and make a mess of anthems, police situation? Oh, God. Yep. Et cetera. Et cetera. And, and, yes. Tori, I don't even want to get into, like, the that 1% of, like, that African interpreter who did it. Let's go into, like, more of a, a realistic situation where there are either – Deaf people or uh, hearing people who have deaf parents, which they're called CODAs, child of deaf adults. Nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I have a coworker who's a CODA and I love her to death. And we, you know, she's a wonderful interpreter, but she's also had training. So it's kind of like just because your father was a glass maker doesn't make you a glass maker, you know? <laughs> so um, it, it's, uh, it, it's tough because there's also interpreters who say, ah, I'm just going to interpret on the side. You know what I mean? I'm just going to do it for some extra money. Right. And that brings down the thing. You know, I, I say this to nurses. I say, hey, do you mind if I nursed on the side? Could I make some extra good money? As in, if I learn good all about nursing, can I do that on the side? Or, hey, I'd like to do some doctoring on the side. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, come do some engineering. <laughs> yeah, on the side. Yeah, sure. I know shapes. <laughs> build, build a bridge on the side. No problem. Yeah. Right. We'll all drive over it. To Tacoma Narrows. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome. All right. And anyone, I will say this before I get started with Pete, if I've sparked any kind of questions uh, from anyone or you know someone who is interested in it, please feel free to contact me on Facebook, um, message me or whatever. I, I'm, I'm always, I love talking about what I do, as you can see. I, I could talk about this all goddamn day. Um, so just long as you don't have to sign it all day because you'd get tired. Yeah. Oh god, I love using this thing because these things. Oh. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you if I if I if I couldn't talk for whatever reason, I'd never. I'd. Jeez, I'd be quiet. Right. I'll anyway. tell you. I'll tell you, man. <laughs> so, uh, Peter, 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 you are a project manager. Yes, sir. So um, I was looking into, like, oh, what would it be to, you know, because I've also, for some issues that are not related to um, anything that I don't like my job or what I do for a living, I, I have looked into looking into doing other work as well. So I've looked into project management, and I've, like, taken the project management, you know, practice tests and things like that, and I've, I was like, oh, my God, that's a lot of stuff, and, and like – and, and, and I, I'm an intelligent person. I went to college. I could say a stakeholder. I know what a stakeholder is, one who holds stakes, obviously. So, <laughs> Sir, um, the best. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in your job, it's uh, – and, and I, I think I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But uh, in your job, uh, how close are you to what is considered the quintessential – or no, the cookie cutter, I should say, project manager? As opposed to like and to the things that you do, like you get shit done. I, I know that about you. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, and but I want to know is compared to what the cookie cutter project manager is and what is expected and what a certified person is, how, how would you compare and contrast yourself? All right. So there are. OK. Um, so as project managers go, uh, I'm full on everything because project manager is, has three words there's three words that a project manager must live and breathe and die by cost schedule performance that's what project managers do so that's like all i do right all the time Every, everything i do even when i'm building something if i'm sending someone out in the field right in my head is always does this impact cost does this impact schedule does this impact performance right all the time can you call performance outcome as outcome, well. Yeah, performance is outcome. Performance okay. is the performance of the um, the 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 deliverable. What we call the deliverable. So, yeah. and that's the difference between a program. So there's programs and there's projects. I'm not a program manager. I'm a project manager. Programs are things that are ongoing. Like you work for a program, Mike. But if your boss gave you something to do, like do it, write this grant, or you know, I need you to interpret this weekend for this event. That's a project. Projects mm -hmm. have an end date and they have a deliverable. Now, deliverables can be anything. They can be tangible and non-tangible. So it can be I hand you a widget, right, or I mm -hmm. perform a service, right, or a combination thereof. Um, 
it could be instruction, could be whatever. Well, instruction is a service. So, um, yeah, so I, that's what I do. I, I, I'm, I'm approached by a customer. I'm given a, a set of requirements. Um, and then I have to, and money, I'm given, I'm given, well, I'm given a set of requirements, I write a proposal, they get the proposal. If they accept the proposal, then the proposal then becomes my defined set of requirements. And then I have to follow in that proposal is cost, schedule, and performance. I have to then deliver that product. When I say I'm going to do it, it's got to, got to do what I said it was going to do. And it's got to cost as much as I said it was going to cost. That never happens. There's always shit that happens because we do prototypes. Um, now, where I'm different from your cookie cutter project manager is 99% of project managers, right, run well-known projects. So like in a manufacturing facility, like a car manufacturing facility, right? They might have a project to build a transmission, right? But they build these all the time, and they they know like they know how what they know what they have to order. They ha they know when it has to be there. They know how it's going to perform if it's done correctly. All that. I don't get any of that. When I'm given something, uh, I'm given a desired result, but I don't know exactly how we're going to get there. I have a, I have an idea. Like we'll we'll sit down. We'll go like all right. We're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna machine this. And we're gonna form that, and we're gonna three D print that, and we're gonna paint these, and then we're gonna assemble it, and it should work. Right. It's like, uh, hey Pete, we we want to rapidly create a flying pig. There are no flying pigs. Right. So we'd like you to make a flying pig. What what's that gonna take? <laughs> all right. So are you talking about a flying mechanical pig or flying biological pig? <laughs> Because what I want to get to is what I've heard you talk to me about before also, which I find fascinating and quite uh, a human um, element is uh, it's never – it's never – as you're having all these meetings and stuff and as you're showing this is what we're doing, here's our progress, I'm getting you your pig, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, but we want the pig to have armor. You didn't say you ever wanted the right. pig to have armor. So now, now, okay, what that is, that's called um, – hold on, I'm going to get the terminology right – that is because it's uh, I, I, feature creeps coming to mind. It's not feature creep. It's it's scope creep. So what that is, it's called scope creep. So what you have done, we have a scope, right? We de we determined what we're going to make. You said make a thing. I said, hey, here's my proposal. This is the thing I'm going to make. And then you come back and say, hey, can this thing also do this? And I say, that's outside the scope. So what I'll do is I'll say, do you really want it to do that? And they, yes, we do. So then I write a performance. I have to write up a a a change of performance uh, document. So I, I write up, okay, this is what we wanted to do now. Here's the impact to schedule cost or performance or all three. I send it to the customer. They sign, okay, now our scope is this right. and this other thing. Yeah, And then you have to say, listen, if you want this pig to have armor, it's not going to land. So the arm, I can make the armor so that when it lands, it'll be fine. It'll be alive, but you're not going to have landing gear. <laughs> so we just hit on what, you, what we call risk. So what I'm going to say is they'll say, can you put armor on this flying pig, right? And I'll say, I can or I can't. But let's say, let's okay. say I can. I can, but you're going you're gonna to assume some risk. It might crash, like probably going to crash. I'm going to give you a 95% chance it's going to crash. Right. Might fly, and I might be able to do something to beef up the other stuff once I put it on there to figure that out. But that's not a, that's not a known given. I do know it's going to impact performance. I do know you're going to have an issue, and it could very well crash. You do understand why I need this pig in armor, right? I, I do, but, you know. A lot of angry birds out there. Right. All right? Just saying. That's fine. You do know that I need another six months and another million dollars to make that happen, and you have to assume the risk that it might crash. And if it does crash, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board, and I might need more money and more time to get it done. I'm counting on it. So... <laughs> Here's the problem. Points. Well, here's the problem. Okay. We'll, we'll get to the question in a second. Here's the problem with that. We have some people at work who don't know how to say no to customers. And I have learned to say no to customers. And I am quick to say no. And I'm like, and I'm not being a jerk. I'm being right, their right. friend. I'm actually, I am actually helping them. I feel like it's my duty and my responsibility to let them know when they're asking me something that is bug nuts, bullshit, crazy. Right. right? It, and right. If I don't do that, I feel like I'm letting them down, 
right? If because I give you pig armor, armor heavy enough to sustain this pig in battle, it will weigh twice as much. Pigs weigh a lot. Yeah. And you want the pig to fly, don't you? Yeah. All right. Exactly. All right. All let's right. do some questions. Okay. So Spence wants to know if you have enough project. Uh, they, I'm going to interpret this a little bit because I'm an interpreter. Uh, if you, you have enough um, project management experience, do you feel like you could go into any type of field uh, and, and interpret any, any type of project? Or do you kind of feel like you're limited to the specialty to which you do? Okay. I think from a project manager standpoint, that's a, a maybe. Um, if it's anything – any engineering project I think I could walk into and handle it provided I had unlimited access to the experts in the field. I did not have to be the expert. Okay. So, yeah. Right? So, like, like if it was like, hey, we want you to be the project manager on this building. Yeah. Like, a little, little outside of your scope. So but you way out. Probably, way outside of my expertise. Yeah. You have the right people in, sure. in with, with you. Then, then you'd be able to pull it off. But uh, certainly project management, and there are types of companies from what I can understand that you just, they're just like, we want a project manager and we want you to do this and you better just know how to do yeah. whatever it takes. No, no, that's, and that's important. And that's important. I, honestly, I, I probably would not want to take, probably would not want to take any project management job outside of engineering and definitely, well, definitely nothing outside of engineering. I, I'd be really hesitant to do that. I could, I could. And if the person was like willing to work with me and give me like a year to spin up before I was like really on the hook, then and if it was interesting, I might do that. Um, but even within engineering, outside of my field or any of the fields I've worked in, I've worked in several. Um, I would still be a little hesitant, but I could probably I could probably handle it. Um, engineering is a very uh, it's a it's a it's a very kind of methodical. There is a process to engineering, and almost every engineering field that I've worked in. That process, the, the process itself, has really been the same. You know, okay. building. Honestly, though, building a building, a structure of any kind, a bridge, is very similar to to building anything. Because um, right. I've, I've worked with architects and stuff, but buildings are they're a little they're a little outside yeah. my yeah. So I'm gonna answer one of Tori's three questions and then defer the rest to you. So okay. yes, Pete, college. Uh, okay. Pete, what was your major? Well, uh, I started out as an engineering major, and just like Mike, I ran my head up against some really tough classes. And it's it's amazing because I'd been in the engineering field for like, I don't know, let's see, 35. So, a long time. About 15 years. I'd been in the engineering field, in the, in the field working as an engineer, well, working in engineering and as an engineer for the last couple of years, but for like 15 years, I started taking engineering classes and I could not get through those really tough ones near the end. And I wound up dropping out of the engineering program and just getting a mathematics uh, associates. You've always been kind of gifted, though, in that you've done a, been always hired as doing some as a draftsman and always picked up a lot, always been given the opportunity to do a lot of design. Yeah. In engineering, basically. So, and I think that's really been to your benefit, even though it was a lot of the kind of work that, you know, even I do, like I'm in a sign language interpreter. I do so much administrative stuff, but it's hard for me to show and prove to someone that that's what right. I do. Right. Um, because what well, you're an interpreter. It's like, no, your job was a draftsman. No, yeah. no, it, it, it wasn't right. So, no. Well, so, so in engineering, you have draftsman, you have designer and you have engineer. So they're kind of like three levels. Um, so uh, even though I did drafting, a lot of drafting, um, I did also did a lot of design work. So on my resume, I'd put designer. And um, nobody argued that at all. Um, and then, you know, in, in interviews, I would specify, yeah, I'd design these things. I mostly did all the engineering, and I would give it to the engineer, and he'd kind of just basically sign off on it. Because um, to be an, an engineer, uh, a lot of companies like you to have that degree, whether you have the experience or not. Um, and then if you come, if you become a PE, now you have to have experience to have a PE. So PE is really, that, that's actually, that is, a PE is a professional engineer. That's actually quite uh, hard to get and is very admirable. And people who are PEs are really respect because they've, they've worked very hard to get it. Uh, they're allowed to sign off on things. Like, is you want to build this position, bridge, you have to have a PE sign it. Is this the position you thought you, what you'd be doing, what you're doing now? 
I'd say it's your dream job for sure. It is. I'm I mean, actually kind of doing my dream job. When I was in, when I, dude, I remember when I was a kid, I was like in like fourth or fifth grade and we were drawing stuff in art class and I drew a tank. I remember, I remember this. I drew a tank with helicopter blades on top of it, right? And they were like, what is this? I was like, it was a flying tank. I, I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to work for the army. And I'm going to design, I'm going to design, I'm going to invent stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to design a flying tank, right? <laughs> I'm not designing flying tanks. But I do work for the army, and I and I do basically invent things for the most part. So yeah, I kind of I kind of th- as a kid, this was it. And then as I got older, I was like, ah, oh, that'll never happen. And then as I came, you know, as I got older and older, it did happen, and it just kind of it kind of fell on me. Really, I kind of fell into this job. Spence is asking, who's your MVP on your team? Bitch, that's you. You know that. I can't. I can't say that. That's. I'm saying it. You're the MVP. <laughs> I'm You're not gonna say MVP. that. I I can't say who the MVP on my team is. I got a lot. Of, look, I, I'm gonna tell you. I got a lot of people I work with who are f- some damn fine human beings. I mean, some of the people. There are some people who suck, but there are some people on our team that are just amazing. I mean, they work like they work their ass off. Some of these guys are really smart. And you'd be surprised at, like, some of our mechanics are brilliant. Like, some of our people who are, like, we call them integrators, but they're the wrench turners and stuff. Some of those guys are really goddamn smart, and they figure out stuff. Like, they're not, like, book smart, but they can look at something, and they can go, oh, you don't want to put your rotor neuter there. Your rotor neuter should go over here. That'll give you much more torque on the confabulator. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's brilliant. All right, so uh, just like me, um, we're like running out of time. Mm-hmm. So do we want to, we want to kind of, uh, take, uh, take this as, uh, it's it, like fun. And, uh, I mean, people can always ask us more questions on after the, after the show or whatever, but we, I do have a game so we could defer to the people in the room. If you guys want, we could, uh, it's a, it's a game we could play. Uh, we haven't yeah. played a game. At all. I feel like, I feel like I, I really want to play a game. Yeah, we can play a game. Let's do this real quick, though. We've got – give me five minutes, all right? So okay. <clears throat> just so people understand how things get made. And this is – because, like, when I watch movies, like when I watch Iron Man or whatever, and he's, like, making – you know, he, I built this armor overnight, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, think This is how things get made. The, 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 the need is expressed. So you need something. There's a purpose. So then you make the thing for that purpose. But what that takes is there's a there's a a time that's spent designing it, and you don't know. Nobody knows. I mean, I guess a superhero might know what something's gonna look like right out the gate. So I'm gonna draw this thing. We're gonna make it, and it's gonna work perfectly the first time. All right. So we go through prototyping, and we might make all kinds of iterations or whatever. But you have to. There's things you have to determine. Am I going to cut this out of sheet metal? Is like this part? Is this part going to be cut out of sheet metal? What kind of metal is it going to be? You know, um, what kind of? How am I going to attach these pieces together? Am I going to three D print stuff? Am I like when do you like when am I going to three D print something versus have a mold made and have it molded? What, you know, how am I going to machine this? I'm going to use CNC. I'm going to use a lathe. Am I going to use um, you know? Am I going to forge it? Like, is it going to be like a cast piece? Is it going to be injection molded? There's all these processes, and you put all that shit together, right? And then if it doesn't work or you have problems, you have to redesign stuff. And then there's all this shit you have to give up to get, you know, because like you'll draw a sketch out and you're like, I want it to do this and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, but if you use that piece here, you can't use this piece here. And you can't put this material with that material. It's like, it's like, so there's all these iterations of things that things go through. So when the first, when the prototype is made, it costs like a like a zillion times more than the product itself because there's all this stuff called NRE, which is non-reoccurring engineering, and that's that whole process, that whole process of figuring out how to get the goddamn first one of these to work right. Um, and it can take, dude, it can take years to make something work right. And that's why you're not Tony Stark. No, no, but. Well, goddamn played one just recently on a job that we got done in like three months that should have taken about a year. We we uh, superheroed that shit into existence. Now I think, all right, we, and and this is going to be a. I'm giving you 30 seconds to answer okay. this question. I like Tori's question. Do you ever finish a project and then later on think of ways that could have been better, and then what do you do about it? 
Um, all right. So yes, all the time, every project, every fucking thing I make could have been made Let better it. because we, we do prototypes and we don't get, you know, whatever. Um, and then what do I do about it? Nothing because I'm not funded to do anything about it. It is what it is. That's, I mean, when things go out, you know, good is good enough. And what does Denise Clemens always say? Better is the enemy of good. So, That's yes, every every goddamn thing we make, we could have done you, better. You need to get the uh, Krusty Brand seal of approval on your projects. It's not just good. It's good enough. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's play a game. Hey, hey, Mike, Does it, did it kill anyone? Nope. Did it work? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Solid. Hey, did you get a coin out of it? I have gotten plenty of coins. I've gotten several coins. So, yeah. All right. So, Mike, let me know. You ready to go for the game? I am. Hit the, hit the music. Here you go. It's game time with the Mythwits. I'm Mikey K, and I'll be your game master this week. And this week we are playing Hashtag Wars. Uh, a little revisited one. I was looking through some games to do, and I was like, oh, we haven't done this one in a while. And I had an idea for a different game, which I will be working on later. It's going to be about laws that existed or still exist, like crazy laws on the books that exist or don't exist. But that's a game for another time. Okay. This one is Hashtag Wars. Peter, I will be giving you two hashtags from Instagram. You must tell me which one has more posts associated with it. There are eight questions with uh, two pair each and you must do better than 65 percent you know because 65 rounds up to 70 70 is passing poly rules right there you go all right here we go hashtag wars number one so again for instance the word hashtag vegan okay or hashtag vegetarian have more more posts associated with it okay so there's more there's more vegetarians right mm -hmm. but vegans are more assholes about being vegans so they're more likely to hashtag vegan so i'm gonna say hey no slight on all our vegan fans out there <laughs> um so i'm gonna <laughs> Hey, nothing personal. I just, you know. <laughs> I, I agree with your assessment, and I agree with your uh, your uh, damage control. Right, there you go. <laughs> so, no, I'm going to say vegan. Vegan's got to be more. There's got to be more vegan than vegetarian. Uh, Peter, will you, will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Would you hit that correct answer button for me? Oh, that, that one. Sorry, I accidentally. Uh, there you go. That's the one. There Sweet. You go. Excellent. Correct for you, sir. Good. I, I, I had a, I, 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 some of these. Are there are there are logical pathways, and some of them there are not. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I hope it's not a trigger warning per se for anyone, but there are going to be some interesting topics along with these hashtags. Here we go, hey, number you two. You don't make the hashtags. You don't make them. I don't make the hashtags. Look, right. I just find them. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah, I didn't make them up. So number two is. Ingrown toenail, hashtag, hashtag ingrown toenail, or hashtag back piercing. Jesus. Hmm. Got to be back piercing because, again, I'm going to go back to the, the, the vanity of it. You know, no, how many people really want to, like, talk about, hey, I got this ingrown toenail. How cool is that? Hashtag ingrown toenail. Um, but back hey, piercing, I guess... I can see people like, I, you know, I don't care what people think about me, but I got this really cool back tattoo. You want to see it? Or back back piercing. You want to see it? So I'm going to go back piercing. Okay. Um, do me a favor and hit that incorrect. Oh, oh. dirty, Thank disgusting you. people talking about your toeses. Yes. Come on, people. That's all people want to do is just show their disgusting things. Uh, oh, mouth you know what, Mike? Body. You know what I failed to remember? That People Dr. Pimple Popper exists and not Dr. Back Piercer. <laughs> oh, my God. Why didn't oh, I? Oh, that, that would have been a good one, as a matter of fact. Let me do yeah. a hashtag Pimple Popper. <laughs> Blackhead. All right. Uh, could always use more. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, 
that's it for that one. Now here's number three for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right off the bat. This is a very close one. All right. Mm-hmm. That said. Hot dog penis, hashtag hot dog penis, or hashtag things full of beans that shouldn't be full of beans. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> what the fuck? And I, and I highly encourage everyone to Did go check Do you have the numbers on these? Do you just... Of history. Okay, you got to give us, when I answer this, after I answer this, and I get it wrong, you got to give us the numbers on it, okay? Oh, oh. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, vegan was 81.3 million posts. Vegetarian, 23.5. I apologize for not doing that. Ingrown toenail, 15,000. Uh, back piercing, 1,409. Wow. I would have thought there would have been yeah, more back piercing. I apologize. Okay. All right. So now, yes. Things full of beans that shouldn't be full of beans. Or hot dog penis. God damn it. Now, now, I'm 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 gonna give you a little hint. Both of them, a little low. Yeah, one I of would've... them, disappointingly low. Yeah, which is for you to decide. Uh, dude, god damn it! All right, I want to say the beans one because that one's funnier. Like, I like that one. I really do, and I want that to be the winner. But I think I I, I, I think it's gonna be art. What's it? It's art. It's art, yeah. I th- art, yeah. You throw some fire ants in that. No, I think um, hot dog penis only because there was an episode of uh, Silicon Valley where there was this whole thing about hot dog, not a hot dog, and it was like they were talking about penis, not penis. So I'm gonna go hot dog penis because I think that's the right answer, but I really want it to be the beans one. Well, I have good news for you. It is the beans one. Oh. Okay. Uh. Things full of beans that shouldn't be full of beans. 27. Okay. 27. (laughs) Hot dog penis. 25 posts. How did you even find the, like, no to look? Oh, oh, so the the things full of beans that shouldn't be full of beans, I I attribute that directly to my middle son. He showed me a bunch of pictures. There was a, now if you just Google that, there's more Google pictures than there are on Instagram for whatever reason. But there's, it's art. I'm telling you, it is amazing. People take beans and they put them in all kinds of things. This guy has beans full in a, in a, in a gun chamber. Mm-hmm. It's just filled in a gun chamber. There's uh, beans in uh, just Why all. does it not surprise me that somebody filled a gun chamber full of beans? Like that Oysters is in the half shell with beans in it. All right. I mean, just weird things, artsy, artsy things. So uh, I encourage everyone to go check that out. Wow. <laughs> like too much time on his hands, Jesus. and of course, who who comes in under hot dog penis? But hot dog penis himself, Paul Noons. Welcome yeah. to the show. Paul. All, right. All right, here we go. Number four, Peter. Okay. That now. All right. Things you wish you could unsee. Hashtag things you wish you could unsee. Mm-hmm. Or most of Twitter. Cake sitting. Hashtag. Cake oh sitting. boy. Oh, oh! You know which one I want to be right. Oh, <laughs> oh! Yeah, fuck you. Um, <laughs> little inside baseball there, and it's not what you think. It's actually not probably not what you're thinking. Um, <laughs> what are you talking about? And quite frankly, I wish you'd shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, things! God damn it! Um, things. Would people want to talk about their cake sitting thing though, or or would that be like a funny thing that like college kids like talk because they heard about like oh I heard about cake sitting who oh, cake sitting, um, mm-hmm. or is it things like or, you know, you've got one isolated thing that could be popular right, but you have one very broad topic. Yeah, that... let's go with the broad topic. The the things I can't. What was it? Things I wish uh, I could okay. see. So it's hashtag. Uh, Things you wish you could unsee. Yes, that one. Things I wish I could unsee. That's more. Okay. Peter, 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 Peter. Cake sitting, 878 okay. posts affiliated. Things you wish you could unsee, 45. 45? Come on. 
Who wants to unsee stuff? Once you see it, it's so good. Like blue waffle. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> no. Oh God, now I got to do that one too. <laughs> I <hate you. laughs> Oh God, cake sitting. Well, actually, I'm kind of happy that cake sitting is a is a thing. More popular. All right. Well, hey, you know, it is what it is. Now, and I don't mean uh, uh, this is probably the last one that gets no. There's one more other than this one that gets a little on the risque side. Uh, that said, uh, it's it's <laughs> kind of in your face, or even it could be on your face. But um, number five, okay, and it's a very equal opportunity. That's all I want to say. And it's, it's very difficult. All right, you're gonna have to really pull it out for this one. I thought I pulled it out for the hot dog one. All right, go ahead. Uh, hashtag penis tattoo or hashtag vagina tattoo. Mm. That's a tough call, isn't it? And I will yes. say this. On one of the pictures I saw that was number one, it was number one on both of them because I can't even explain why and I don't want to. So, um... <laughs> What if you got a tattoo of a penis on your vagina? That'd be interesting. Um, so, penis <laughs> tattoo. Check, hashtag vagina tattoo and let us know. Hashtag vagina tattoo. You know, I'm really surprised at all the porn that's on Twitter. For all, like, you know, like, it, I am not going on Twitter. Um, damn it, damn it. Who's going to brag about their tattoo more, guys? Or, I, I, oh, I, but hold on. Also, Who's going to be more apt? Would more guys get a vagina tattoo or would more women get a, you know? Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm thinking it wrong. I'm thinking tattoo on the penis or tattoo on the vagina. You're talking about penis tattoo or vagina yeah. tattoo. Okay, oh, I'm right, going yeah. to that up. Da, da. No, 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 no. I did that. I messed it up. Okay, penis tattoo. Or vagina. Uh, penis, who gets a penis tattooed on them or vagina tattooed on them and would brag about it in a post? Right. I'm going to say vagina because I don't think women are getting penis tattoos and bragging about it, but I think a guy would totally get a vagina tattoo and brag about it, and I don't think a guy would get a penis tattoo. I mean, I, there's some that would brag about it, but for the most part, it's a vagina tattoo. Okay. You done? Yeah. <laughs> Long way to go to get it wrong, right? Yeah. Uh, penis tattoo, 1,400. 83. Vagina tattoo. 2,135. Bingo. Yeah. There you go. It's got to be something to that. I mean, like, if I got a penis tattoo, I doubt I'm going to brag about it, but I might. You never know. Yeah. Hey, now, look, now Mike, this... I got Uranus tattooed on me. <laughs> there you go. Oh, hashtag Uranus. God damn it. That's a good one. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, everyone could could anyone Spence? I I believe I you are correct. Vaginas are prettier. Although I saw some pretty good ink work. I I honestly think you guys should go and check it out. There were a couple that were very absurd. A couple that were like tastefully done, and a couple that were very well. You might even want to put it under things you wish you hadn't seen or you wish you could unsee. <laughs> um. All right, here we go. Uh, number six. Okay. How many of these we got? Buddy, uh, there's only eight. Okay. We're moving on. All right. We've got a little late start tonight, so we're good. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Hashtag glitter beard or okay. hashtag red rocket. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, now, my God. I I'm not going to – this is no in no way meant to – sway you in any way i'm just letting you know that if you hadn't heard of glitter beard glitter beard is a thing i know it's a thing i know it's a thing i respect right. you know what i respect a guy who uh, or anyone who would hashtag red rocket over glitter beard because glitter beard is dumb red rocket's funny uh, <laughs> so. using yourself as one data point you would red rocket over glitter beard hell yeah hell yeah i, I would know. definitely Hashtag Red Rocket over Glitter Beard. I may have texted Red Rocket, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that one because I want it to be true. Sure. Say that again. Oh, it's gonna be some douchey. It's gonna be douchey Glitter Beard, isn't it? Um, fuck. Red Rocket's kind of an older term too. 
I'm gonna go glitter beard. I want it to be red rocket, but I'm gonna say glitter beard. All right. Uh, so red rocket, seventy thousand one hundred seventy-five posts. Oh no. <laughs> glitter beard, fifty-four thousand four hundred six. I'm upset that I didn't get the point, but I'm happy that I didn't get the point. <laughs> <laughs> No. It's a pirate, it's a pirate victory. Right. We're gonna move on, move it on. Uh, all right, now this one. Uh, it was the best way that I could get even numbers for, uh, like, Anna. What is that called? Uh, arachnophobia and whatever that snake phobia is that I couldn't even pronounce. Uh, but instead, I went with hashtag spider photography or hashtag snake photography. Why do either one of those? Well, snakes I like, but why does spider photography? No, spiders actually pretty. Um, fucking snakes off this motherfucking plane. plane. Uh, spider phot- Why is that a hashtag? All right, spider photography or or snake photography. But it's not snake photography. It's the uh, what is it? Is it the right word or is it snake photography? Hashtag no, it is. It is hashtag snake photography. Okay. All right, hashtag spider photography. Hmm. I'm gonna say spider photography. So you're gonna say spider photography is the larger one associated. With. Yes. Okay. Spider photography, nineteen thousand seventy-two. Doesn't it make you feel good that it's just it's even that low yeah. with the billions of hashtag numbers okay. that are sure. snake photography hashtag snake photography. 26,414. Damn it. Damn it. All right. So this next one, I don't envy you because it's, it's very close. And I think you'll, you'll agree that it's a good one, though. And uh, I hope that you are – I hope you pick the right one. <sighs> Go with your heart because okay. your logic is fallible today. Yeah, oh, it's uh, off, way off. <laughs> uh, okay. Hashtag project planning. Or hashtag sign language interpreter. Oh. Closer I, than you would think. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say project planning because it's more widespread and it's more douchey thing to brag about. Oh, project management. Look at me. It's very narcissistic and hashtags are narcissistic and I'm guilty of them as much as anybody, but I'm (laughs) going to say project planning. All right. Project planning. 14,012. Sign language interpreter. 11,052. Yay. Yay. All right. So how'd I do? Would I get 50%? Uh, or no, oh, shit. You got three right out of eight. Three? Oh, god. All right, hold on. So, I got something I want to show real quick because we mentioned spider photography. Paul Nunes, when I visited him, brought me a gave me a present. It's a spider in glass, it's cool. I like him. Got some big old fangs on him. What's his name? Oh, I gotta give him a name. I do. I haven't got a name yet, but I'll I'll come up with one good. Hey, you gotta sex that thing first. You know if it's a her, she, or a he. I'll I'll have to contact uh, our friend Nancy Morelli and ask Not, her. There you go. You should do that. All right. All right, Mike. Let's wrap it up. Let's do it, buddy. All right, man. Here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. I guess it was awesome. It was about me and Mike. Who knows? If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast with your favorite podcatcher. And I'm going to shorten this fucking thing soon. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by, and I'm changing this, Because I'm kind of going all in on TSR. So it's part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't change it. And Mike, don't let it introduce scope creep. You don't want the scope creep from this show. 
Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And, hey, yeah, we're back. See you all next week. And, Mike? I bring you love.